Okay, thank you very much. Um, I'm honored to be the last uh, speaker and close this conference. Um, uh, so, um, this is the picture from uh, Wikipedia. So, maybe the first picture that one finds of Samsung, if, uh, if you Google it. And uh, this picture is, uh, is an IHS. And uh, uh, so, IHS was a common place between uh, me and Samsung from the very start. The first time uh, we met was in 2006. I was a student in Princeton. I came to IHS for uh, as, a, as a student, as a PhD student, so for research uh, visit and uh, met Samson for the first time. We walked in, in this forest and uh, talked about uh, uh, quantum variation of uh, Hodge's uh, structure, H3 uh, in uh, Calabi-Yau, like quantization of B-model and stuff. And I was very impressed by the like uh, deep uh, thoughts uh, Samson uh, gave me on the topic. And uh, since uh, then, we uh, touched scientifically many times and uh, like main theme of my uh, current research gauge theories and integrable systems it's uh, cause the central topic of our the school from uh, which uh, well, we, uh, uh, we came well I was also born in uh, Leningrad and uh, this uh, Fadiv school gauge theories integrable systems it continues like inspire uh, my research so uh, let me talk today about uh, uh, several um, uh, papers. I will um, uh, summarize the key results of some of those. Uh, they are made more recently in collaboration with uh, uh, these people, with uh, postdocs uh, Ruben Frasik, Alexander Zumbalik, and uh, Chris Elliott. And uh, those are references. So uh, the topic of uh, Today's lecture would be a group version of a Hitchin system. And to start, we'll just recall what, what a Hitchin system is. So maybe most of people are familiar. And but just a reminder, so for a complex variety X and an effective divisor D on that complex variety and the complex adjective group G, G Higgs bundle would be a pair P phi, where P is the principal G bundle, and phi called the Higgs field or Hitchin field is a section of their a joint value uh, bundle value in the Lie algebra, usually taken tensor with canonical line bundle on X with the singularity set D, right? So that's the usual thing. And uh, then there is a theorem going back to Hitchin, Markman, Batachin, Mukai, and others, and Turing and others, that there is an algebraically integrable system on the modular space of meromorphic Higgs bundles on a curve, or on a Hitchin system. So, this touched <coughs> physics in many contexts. So a Hitchin system on a complex curve of X, it plays a prominent role since uh, we know after the geometric Langlands program from Bailinson, Greenfield and uh, linked to N equals four supersymmetric gauge theory by Kapustin and Witten. And uh, then there is a construction of the compactification of the 6D2 comma zero self dual theory on X viewed as four D N equals two theory of uh, Gaiota and zabir witten system associated to that. After quantization, this uh, Hitchin system or the integrable system of Higgs bundles, it relates to nikrasov shatashvili limit of, uh, that, uh, of, uh, of the 6D uh, 2 comma 0 self-dual theory compactified to the 4D n equals 2 theory, compactified on the curve on which Hitchin system is supported. And after for the hyperkeller rotation and quantization, or as uh, in our slang we refer like uh, in the case of two epsilon, it relates to the total theory and correlation functions determined by the W algebra. So there is a hero here with like a two way of uh, making uh, the system quantum in a sense, or deformation and quantization. There are two parameters which control uh, like uh, the classical story going to one way quantum or then going to the field theory quantum in a sense. Uh, so then uh, to move on and uh, see how we can make that uh, uh, story um, like group-like instead of Lie algebra-like, let's recall what an abstract Higgs bundle is. So there have been given a definition of abstract Higgs bundle, which is helpful for this work, and it goes to Danagi and Geisgari. So uh, re to, to, to see it, re uh, reformulate and uh, think about an ordinary Hitchin system on a curve X with singularities <coughs> in D. 
as an example of an abstract Higgs bundles which will be valued in the canonical bundle, line bundle Kx on D. Now, an abstract G Higgs bundles would be pair P, C, where P is the principal G bundle on X and C is the sub bundle of the adjoint bundle. And each fiber of C consists simply of centralizers in G of regular elements of the group G. So then there would be an equivalence between an abstract G Higgs bundle and an abstract spectral data where spectral data, abstract spect spectral data, consists of an abstract, so-called abstract chimeral cover, X tilde, and this usually transformed T bundle on X. So this is the nagy gory construction. And uh, this construction then can be specialized to a valued Higgs bundle. Higgs bundle valued not in the canonical line bundle, but instead on something else. So, so, so concretely, we can replace the space of values, the usual canonical line bundle, Kx, by a family Y of groups, phi bert over x. And uh, then the Higgs field phi becomes a section of, uh, of, of this thing, of the tensor product of uh, that uh, family Y of groups and uh, C, which was mentioned on the previous slide. And uh, then one can get, <coughs> let's see if I can close, this one. Oops. What does the tensor product mean if y is not a vector bundle? No, uh, we think about that uh, uh, as, as an abelian group. Uh, a bundle of abelian groups, fiber over x. So not just a family. A bundle. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So, uh, then uh, one can associate to this abstract uh, sp uh, spectral data a modular space of, uh, of uh, Higgs uh, sub G of Y slash uh, Y over X. So uh, a canonical example of this uh, vibration studied mostly by works of Danagi was the case when Y is uh, itself an algebraic variety which is fibered over base variety X and generic fiber is an elliptic curve. So then you can consider module space of G bundles on Y. And uh, this module space of G bundles on Y is isomorphic to the module space of G Higgs bundles on X with values in the elliptic vibrations, vibrations Y over X. So this construction of Danagi. So, uh, and in particular, if Y itself is two-dimensional algebraically integrable system fibered over X with elliptic fibers, then the resulting space bund G over Y or Higgs or G Higgs bundles of Y over X is an algebraic integrable system. So this is called so-called also in slang like uh, algebraic integrable system elliptical, elliptical in vertical directions, so elliptical in momentum directions. Uh, so now we can have the usual vertical here here in uh, the classification of the previous uh, page, like we can consider the three cases for the structure of the vertical uh, group of the vertical uh, fiber. Namely, uh, if you take a one-dimensional abelian group, then uh, it could be either non-degenerate elliptic curve, or you can degenerate it by nodal degeneration to a multiple uh, group uh, C star, a nodal degeneration, or you can further degenerate it to an additive group, or just uh, C, a complex line additive group, or that's the cut degeneration of elliptic curve, right? So then, uh, then I found the following uh, quotation from the lectures of uh, Rob Danagi in 2003 book. So he says that Hitchin's system of the modular space of bundles on arbitrary curve X, as well as Markman meromorphic extension of all Higgs bundles is arbitrary structure group, blah, blah, with values in line bundle, which is group variety uh, over X with fiber G additive. And then the modular space of G bundles on elliptic vibrations involves Higgs bundles with structure group G and with values in elliptic vibrations. So that's what was well studied by Danagi and other people. And then he asks his question, is there an interesting geometric interpretation in the remaining trigonometric case where the values are taken in multiplicative group? And there is no answer, so it was uh, open at that moment. But apparently, like many aspects of, uh, of the answer to this question were known before just not connected for some reason together. So, uh, so this is the question mark in the middle case where the fiber is multiplicative group, while when the fiber is additive group, it's the usual Hitchin system. When the fiber is elliptic, 
group, then it's the modular space of G bundles on Y, where Y is elliptic vibration of Rx. Okay, so the purpose of, of this talk would be essentially to clarify the geometrical aspects of uh, this question mark. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll describe and uh, answer on some of the Nagy question, what is the multiplicative uh, Higgs bundles and how it connects to other topics in physics and mathematics. Okay, so uh, we'll focus concretely here on a horizontally, on so-called horizontally rational case when the base X is uh, C or one-point compactification of C. So concretely by uh, X, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll take P1 minus infinity or, well, Maybe I'm mixing notations, I'll be mixing notations in slides. Sometimes I denote by x c minus point at infinity, or sometimes uh, by x the p1, but usually it would be clear from the context. So, so let's say that x is p1 and uh, a pair with uh, a section of canonical um, bundle with a degree 2 pole at infinity. That's the usual, in the usual coordinates, the form dx. And then we'll fix the divisor. So divisor which will be valued in account of dominant coweights of the coweight lattice. So it means that to each uh, like point supporting the divisor associate a, a coweight, will denote a coweight by omega i check, an element of the coweight lattice lambda. So then uh, a multiplicative G Higgs bundle on X which is framed at infinity with singularities in the coweight value divisor would be pair p comma g, where p is the usual, the principal g bundle on x with framing at infinity and g. Now, like unlike the usual Hitchin uh, field, is a section of the uh, adjoint group valued bundle. So the difference with the Hitchin definition is simply like little letter a is replaced by capital A. So which means that it's valued in, in groups rather than Lie algebras. And uh, the definitions also of singularities uh, changed correspondingly. So namely, near each singularity where we have a specified coweight, their singularity of the group valued field is described by following. You take uh, like the diagonal part or the carton part to be their image under this uh, coweight embedding, the image of local coordinate near xi under this coweight action multiplied from the left and from the right by analytical uh, functions, group valid functions in that uh, patch. And we also fix for the framing of the bundle P and the value of the Higgs field at infinity. So that would be the module space of framed G Higgs bundles. So that's the definition. To continue, we need to get it. Are there questions about the definition? Good. Uh, okay, so uh, maybe some mathematicians will like another connection to the specification of the weights or singularities, namely uh, they are canonically linked to the orbits in affine Grassmannian. So indeed, in the, if, you, if you take a formal neighborhood of each puncture xi, then uh, restriction of multiplicative Higgs field g of x defines simply an element of the loop group. You, you, you expand in uh, the local coordinates z, x minus xi, so g uh, double uh, round parenthesis of z. And this element is well defined up to the adjoint action. And also the singularity class doesn't change under the left or right multiplication by, um, by regular uh, elements. So consequently, the singularity class of an element of the loop group would be coset or like double orbit in the affine Grassmannian. So that's uh, G of uh, round parenthesis Z uh, quotient by from the left and from the right of uh, G double of uh, uh, <coughs> G regular series in Z. So orbits in affine Grassmannian are in canonical bijection with the dominant coweights of G. And so fixing uh, a degree at the puncture is the same as fixing the dominant coweight at each Xi. So, uh, so this space is uh, the module space of multiplicative uh, G Higgs bundles uh, have been, or their version of their particular versions in some particular cases, have been uh, considered before, uh, sometimes under the name of module G pairs, and uh, some of earlier works uh, include uh, Batachin, Artyunov, Frolov, Medvedev, Cherkis, Kapustin, Bradin, Chernakov, Dolgoshev, Levin, Olshanievsky, Zotov, Hurtubis, 
uh, Markman uh, very uh, extensive uh, paper uh, uh, the elliptic case and then the Frankel and Go and Boutier worked on with similar definitions for the uh, length lens program. Uh, now we'll take extra um, more condition, na namely we take Calabi Yau condition on the base on X. So well, the structure of multiplicative Higgs bundle makes sense for any curve X. Uh, the modulus space that we'll study, the modulus space of multiplicative Higgs bundles, will carry canonical symplectic structure only in the very special situation. Namely, when, the, when we can equip the curve, the base uh, X, by um, a non-degenerate section of the canonical line bundle. And uh, this is possible if X is a flat curve. So we'll take X to be C, C star, or elliptic curve. So in the case of C, or C star, this section develops a, a pole at infinity, but not zero. But we cannot... So what is the definition of non-degenerate section? So that it doesn't develop zero. So in this case, uh, one uh, can equip the module space of this multiplicative Higgs bundles with uh, symplectic form, unlike uh, the other cases of uh, high genus. So, so this is different with the uh, sto story of Hitchin systems. And Hitchin, Hitchin systems are interesting to study for uh, curves of arbitrary genus. But here we'll get uh, a nice uh, algebraic integrable system, so nice uh, symplectic uh, structures on the module space of multiplicative Higgs bundles only when uh, X is of genus 0 or 1, not high genus. Okay. So in the case when X is an elliptic curve, uh, it was studied in the work of Hurtubis and Markman. So now let's uh, go back a few uh, tens uh, of years and uh, recall uh, what uh, rational Poisson-Lee group is and what's uh, rational uh, R matrix, uh, which uh, goes through uh, many works on uh, integrable systems, Youngians uh, and stuff, right? So, so let, uh, let k of x denote the field of rational functions on x and uh, uh, g be the infinite dimensional Lie group valued in this field of rational functions. And g sub 1 would denote a subgroup of elements which are framed at infinity so that the value at infinity is 1. So then this loop group carries a structure of Poisson, so namely Poisson Lie group, where this Kleinian Poisson structure is defined by the rational R matrix with uh, this uh, famous uh, kernel, 1 over x1 minus x2, where omega is the quadratic Casimir. And uh, this is back to the famous uh, classical works uh, from 80s about uh, integrable systems. So uh, quantization of uh, this classical R matrix leads to quantum uh, rational R matrix and definition of Yangian, etc. Yes. Uh, when uh, you fixed your y vibration from the beginning, which you haven't like shown three cases, uh -huh. yes. does this constitutes like three probably inequivalent integrable systems? Right. Uh, but now you are talking about rational brackets, right? Rational. Right. Right. So, so, so there are horizontal and vertical cases. Uh -huh. uh, we have. Uh, so no, now we are talking only about horizontal. Yes, I'm talking when uh, when it's rational horizontally. So usually, also in some slang or jargon people say about uh, um, integrable systems which are trigonometric rational elliptic in horizontal or like x direction or trigonometric yeah, rational elliptic in the vertical or momentum direction so our conventions is that for this talk that we'll take uh, it to be trigonometric in the vertical direction and uh, the, the the principalities of what is said here applies to all cases on x but for concreteness in this lecture, I'll take x to be p1. Uh, OK, so this is a reminder about the uh, Sklanin bracket, which maybe more than half audience here doesn't need, but uh, another might, might want to uh, look at it. Uh, so what's the Sklanin bracket? So if, if you have an algebraic uh, uh, function on from, uh, from g, from this finite dimensional Lie group G and the point on X, we can consider the evaluation functions. Evaluation functions are straighted to a point X on a, on a curve X, which is just composition of the evaluation map and, uh, and uh, the value of uh, this group, uh, uh, sorry, composition 
of the evaluation map and that one. So, and then the R matrix defines Poisson bracket on the evaluation functions uh, by the formulas for the left and right gradients. So if uh, the left gradient is defined by action from the left and the right gradient by action from the right of the vector fields, then the Poisson bracket of uh, two evaluation functions at uh, uh, points x1 and x2 is uh, given by their inner product of the left gradients at these points minus inner product of the right gradients divided by the difference between the points. Uh, in particular, if uh, phi is a joint invariant evaluation function, then the left gradient, right gradient coincide. So consequently, the Poisson bracket uh, would be zero. So from a joint invariant functions, one can construct uh, commuting Hamiltonians. And uh, then the, uh, pr uh, the projection to the torus divided by the while group, by, by, by the characters or in a joint invariant function, would be isotropic for the Poisson structure. So, uh, so one of, one of things I can concretely uh, demonstrate today is uh, is uh, the following statement. So that the, the sub variety, namely the, the modular space of multiplicative Higgs bundles, is a sub variety in this infinite dimensional Poisson Lie group, and namely it's a symplectic leaf, and uh, it's a symplectic leaf with respect to the Sklenian Poisson structure or de uh, defined concretely by the iterational R matrix. And consequently, uh, this module space of um, multiplicative Higgs bundles, it carries canonical holomorphic symplectic structure coming from this uh, rational R matrix type. And uh, later in the talk, we'll relate that symplectic structure to other uh, definitions or other perspective on this module space. Yes? The previous uh, slide uh, told us uh, the construction. How did it come with this TX inverse? Modulo by W? Yeah, so what's the question? I didn't understand how the torus comes. Uh, yes, Chevalier uh, uh, map. You consider adjoint invariant functions, and uh, uh, then uh, you, have a, you have a projection uh, to the like, conjug conjugacy classes of elements in the group, which is the torus mod the while group. Uh, Okay, so let's let's try to prove uh, these uh, statements. We'll demonstrate the key steps here. So first of all, uh, <coughs> let's see what are how how can we identify the tangent space at the point on the module space of multiplicative uh, G Higgs bundles. So to to take a tangent space, uh, what can we do to a group element? We can multiply it or deform it from the left and from the right. And let's say that these deformations is uh, denoted by xi left and xi right. And uh, I will use the convenient notations for physicists thinking about uh, all of the taken in some faithful matrix no uh, uh, notations. Uh, so, uh, and here, well, g is a group element, xi is a Lie algebra element, but this multiplication means in a faithful uh, matrix representation. So, if you like, just think about them as matrices while. Uh, uh, with, the, with the formula like that. And then there is, of course, equivalence relation between you can uh, conjugate and transform xi left to xi right uh, with uh, the same result. So the equivalence relation on these pairs is that xi left xi right is equivalent to xi left xi right plus this deformation where uh, you have a joint action on uh, xi, where a joint action is uh, g xi g minus 1. So Geometrical way to say that is that away from the divisor, the, the pair which defines the deformation is a section of the quotient bundle uh, defined by this equivalence relation. And then there are the usual, there are usual gauge transformations uh, infinitesimally parameterized by the sections of uh, GP shifted by one. So, so consequently, the deformation complex of the multiplicative G Higgs bundles is uh, uh, the following complex where this denotes their gauge deformations and A is the quotient, pardon me, is the quotient defined here by equivalence class of left and right pairs. Uh, so now let's, con uh, let's consider a tangent space at some point, at, at some particular configuration of the Higgs field and compute the dimension of the tangent space. So at least to, you know, to, to, to see some 
to, to feel what it looks like. Uh, so let's say by, by the equivalence on the space of left and right deformation pairs, we can move everything to the left component, right? Uh, and uh, then uh, let's take the following uh, 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 assumption. Assume that uh, g of x is generic near each singularity xi. So let's assume that g of x is regular semi-simple when x goes to xi. And in this case, case this map adjoint of g of x is diagonal diagonalizable near xi. And then uh, let x-dependent Cartan subalgebra h sub x be a centralizer of that element. And we'll assume that there is a limit of that centralizer as x approaches to singularity. So uh, in this case, let's split uh, in the usual way the Lie algebra to the Cartan and uh, uh, it's a Borel positive and negative. And let uh, E alpha sub, sub x would be generators of the root spaces. So then we can see that the tangent space uh, in the equivalence frame xi left uh, xi left zero is generated by the sections uh, of this form, where we have a sum over those root subspaces of the Lie algebra, which uh, are evaluated by the co-weight defining singularity uh, with a positive number. And uh, then the deformations are parameterized by, by the terms of uh, x minus uh, xi to the uh, contraction between the root and co-weight and uh, arbitrary coefficients. So, so this is concrete, uh, like coordinate choice to parameterize locally deformations. And uh, then uh, assuming that we are in a frame where every co-weight is dominant, um, the total dimension of the deformation space would be just the sum over these local dimensions. So that would be the sum over all the singularities and the sum over all positive roots and the uh, inner product between or evaluation by co-weight and uh, the root over which we sum. And so we come to the formula that the total dimension of this modular space of multiplicative Higgs bundles is the evaluation of the uh, total co-weight or the sum over all co-weights on the wild vector, the half sum over the positive roots. So that's uh, the dimension. Other questions at this point? Okay, so, 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 so now, uh, we can handle at least the dimension that we can feel what uh, the tangent space is. So we are like in a situation to uh, study the symplectic form over there. So let's let, uh, let's come <coughs> let's see what the symplectic form of the modular space of Higgs bundles, of multiplicative Higgs bundles, is, and how come that it agrees with the Sklanin uh, rational R matrix. Uh, so we want to show that it's uh, symplectic with. Uh, respect to the Poisson structure. Uh, so, uh, a tangent space to a symplectic leaf uh, locally at a point or in a Poisson variety uh, and would be the image of the Poisson map from the cotangent bundle to the tangent bundle. And the Jacobi identity would guarantee us that the distribution of the subvarieties of those images uh, in the tangent subspace is integrable. So, the, the usual convention is shaded to a local function called Hamiltonian by physicists in, uh, in the neighborhood of a pointed Poisson variety, Hamiltonian vector field, that's uh, the action by the Poisson map on the differential of the phi. So then uh, the condition that the symplectic structure on S on a sum sub variety agrees with the Poisson structure would be the relation uh, between the uh, symplectic form evaluated on the vector fields associated to the Hamiltonian of fine psi and uh, Poisson structure evaluated on the differentials of this Hamiltonian. So we, we want to show, uh, we want to, 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 to give, to present the formula for the symplectic structure on the module space of multiplicative Higgs bundles omega and verify that for that formula this relation uh, holds. So uh, but uh, before that, so that would, would be step uh, two, and at step one we also need to show that the image of pi, the image of the uh, Poisson structure, uh, is the tangent space to the multiplicative Higgs bundles. So uh, I'll start by writing concretely the formula for the symplectic form on the module space of Higgs bundles. 
Question? No, I'm happy that you're writing square root of minus one and not confusing this with i. Ah. I become happy because of this. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, so uh, so concrete formula. So remember that we've parameterized the deformation of the multiplicative Higgs bundles by, by pairs, xi left, xi right, modular equivalence relation. And here is a formula for the symplectic form on the modular space of Higgs bundles. I'm, I'm first, I'm just presenting you a formula and then we'll show that this formula agrees with the rational R matrix. And, and uh, so the symplectic form is uh, indeed uh, induced on uh, on the sub-variety of the module space of Higgs bundles from the Sklanian uh, rational Poisson structure on the uh, infinite dimensional Lie group. Okay, so what's, uh, what's the formula? Uh, you take uh, here a sum over uh, all uh, neighborhoods of singularities and close these singularities by uh, little uh, disks and uh, 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 integrate over those disks uh, this uh, combination where uh, Zero denotes, uh, excuse me, did I write it here somewhere? Okay, so, so we have disks uh, ui, and uh, by zero we denote a patch of x where all disks are subtracted, like everything else, and uh, decompose uh, xi into their local versions in, uh, near each disk i, and in everything else is denoted by, zero, by subscript zero. So, then uh, the symplectic form uh, has uh, this formula. So first, uh, let's notice that uh, what's written here is well defined. Namely, we need to show that under the change of the equivalence frame in the, uh, let's say, second argument, when uh, primes are shifted to some adjoint transformation, their result doesn't change. Okay, so let's shift. Then uh, the deformation will be computed by uh, this, and then uh, by uh, integration uh, by, by the contour integration, we can see and uh, moving by, by Stokes the sum over d u i to the boundary and then integrating over the u naught, uh, we'll get integration of the regular part of, of, of the regular uh, integrand here, and that's zero. So, so omega would be invariant under equivalence in the second argument. Uh, then we can also show that the previous formula is anti-symmetric. So by suitable choice of equivalence frame, set uh, xi naught r prime to zero, and uh, in this frame, uh, well maybe maybe I'll just uh, skip it because it's uh, quite straightforward. But anyways, by by doing these manipulations to save time, we'll see that uh, omega is uh, anti-symmetric. So then maybe little bit more interesting calculation is uh, to demonstrate uh, actual agreement that the symplectic form that we've defined uh, concretely before it comes from this client Poisson structure so we need to show that omega evaluated on those vector fields is equal to the Poisson bracket between the Hamiltonians which generate those vector fields so we'll choose uh, for the equivalence frames for the vector fields uh, in this form so xi of of Hamiltonian Psi, local evaluation Hamiltonian Psi X1 would be presented in this form and uh, the other one would be presented in this form by setting to zero uh, their uh, second component. And then we'll evaluate, evaluate the symplectic form of uh, defined by concrete formula. And uh, uh, this is a contour integral which involves like propagator 1 over w minus x1, w minus x2, where x1 and x2 are insertion points and we integrate over uh, w over all those boundaries of disks. And then by taking residues, uh, it's uh, straightforward uh, to see that uh, the result is indeed the combination defined by this Kleinian R matrix. So that's a Poisson bracket between evaluation functions psi and phi. This yes. is, uh, uh, is consistent with the previously uh, <coughs> defined patch, right? Right, so, so dui is uh, the contour around uh, each local patch and uh, the sum of it is the same as the contour over the regular. Uh, okay, so th that concludes uh, the proof, but uh, now let's just summarize uh, the statement what, what we had. We had infinite dimensional Poisson Lie group with the Sklanian R matrix, that G of uh, K of X. And uh, 
I outlined uh, the steps of the proof of the key statement. The statement is that the symplectic leaves in uh, the infinite dimensional rational Poisson Lie groups are exactly the module space of multiplicative Higgs bundles. So the symplectic leaves are classified by uh, picking a divisor on P1 valued in the co-weight lattice. So you pick points as attached to each point and element of the, uh, the co-weight lattice dominant cone, and that would be uh, your symplectic leaf. So, yes? But uh, this um, requires an additional choice of a performance of algebra. In, in, uh, you, you embed co-weights into tangent to the group at unity, uh, as far as I remember, right? So, so co-weight uh, for me is a map from uh, the multiplicative group from C star to the maximal torus of G. A map from C star or from U1 to the torus of G. You embed the co-weight lattice into where? So into the tangent to the group, right? No, we don't, we don't need uh, to no. Im embed it. Uh, yeah. No, no. So, so, so in terms of like concrete uh, parameters, uh, the, so the, what is the space of parameters, okay, for the symplectic leaves? The space of parameters um, uh, consists of the following. First, uh, complex parameters, namely the positions of the points of the singularities, and the discrete parameters. Discrete parameters is the choice of the co-weight at each singularity. So the, the, the choice of the Cartan subgroup inside the group? No, no, no. Every, everything else is, is equivalent. Okay, so... Okay, so that's one punchline to okay to carry out of uh, this from from this talk that the, 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 that we know what are the symplectic leaves and the, the, those symplectic leaves are module space of multiplicative Higgs bundles and uh, that's maybe important or um, well illuminating to people who like geometric representation theory and uh, studying you know representation theory uh, by 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 Kirillov in terms of the symplectic leaves so so since quantization of this Poisson. Uh, Lee group of this rational Poisson Lee group yields to Youngian, then to this symplectic leaves one can attach the mod modulate of uh, Youngian and understand representation theory of Youngian in terms of, uh, <coughs> you, know, you, you know, variety of those symplectic leaves. Okay, so we are good on that. Now let's give another uh, connection, connection to periodic monopoles. Well, it came from... Yes. Why you get uh, is it known or is it possible? Suppose if I consider some deformation of the Sklenic bracket. Deformation of Sklenic bracket, okay. I, I, I want to extend to hypocycles and, uh, okay. uh, and, and get a minor uh -huh. like this. So okay. is this uh, uh, deformation or so modifications of the symplectic for corresponding symplectic? Uh, That's a great question. I don't know. I, 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 no, I don't know. I didn't look at it. Uh, maybe. Interesting question. No, people also just to comment on the even uh -huh. relation to my I see, I see, I see. Okay, I think it's a, a nice question to explore. I, I, I didn't do any work about deformation. Um, okay, so we've had various motivation uh, from uh, physics and uh, sort of physical argument uh, why the same uh, story could be captured by the module space of monopoles. So now let's give uh, concrete and precise, uh, precise statements. So one, like, uh, like switching of context uh, is a little bit uh, so, so different in the sense that uh, all the work on the previous slides was in the context of algebraic geometry. We start from varieties and blah, blah, blah. But now we go to the context you know, of uh, nonlinear partial differential equations which describe module space of monopoles. Of course, there is relation um, by two, but we'll, we'll see what, con what concretely we'll need. So we'll take uh, the following definition. Let <coughs> x uh, would be identified, well, the x from the previous uh, pages, uh, that complex line uh, C, we'll identify it with R2, with flat Euclidean metric, and we'll take M to be flat three-dimensional Euclidean manifold, the product of x and S1. And we'll lift the divisor D that collection of uh, points on X with values and co to divisor D tilde on M by uh, attaching to each point some uh, value in, uh, in a circle, in, uh, in the vertical uh, direction of the circle. So the circle coordinate would be called T, and the horizontal, horizontal coordinate would be X as uh, usual, as before. And uh, G sub C would be denoted a compact group associated to their complex uh, reductive group G. 
So then P sub C would be principal GC bundle on the three-dimensional real dimensional space equipped with the smooth connection A and the smooth Lie algebra valued scalar field. Now it's Lie algebra valued again, not like group valued Higgs field, which was before. So that's a mathematical definition uh, for, uh, you know, for the field content to say what Bogomolin equations are. And then a monopole on M with Dirac singularities would be a configuration of A comma phi, which satisfy this Bogomolin equation or that's a reduction of self-dual equations to three dimension. And uh, the singularities are again specified by saying what is the co-weight near each singularity. And here it's very transparent. So since by definition co-weight is embedding or a map from U1 to the maximal torus, then uh, we say that a monopole satisfies this singularity condition uh, just when the configuration of the monopole near each singularity is the image of the unit of the standard unit Dirac monopole under this map. So it sends this, the co-weight sends a unit Dirac monopole to uh, a torus or the conjugacy class of uh, the torus near each singularity. So that's the traditional O. Uh, okay, so in one direction, the map from the monopoles to multiplicative Higgs bundles is uh, very straightforward. Namely, if you have a monopole on X times S1, we can simply restrict the fields A phi to a horizontal slice. Any horizontal slice, pick uh, any point on S, excuse me, uh, which doesn't contain singularities. And then uh, 0,1 part of the horizontal connection would determine structure of holomorphic G bundle on X. So that holomorphic G bundle is uh, a part of the de definition of the multiplicative Higgs bundle. And then we need the, the Higgs field. So what would be the Higgs field? Well, monopole equations, they imply in particular like one of the, if, if you break the self-dual equations into the complex uh, equations, real equations, then the complex equation could be written in this uh, form. And that implies that in the trivialization, let's say in which del bar A is del bar, the holonomy, the vertical holonomy of this complexified connection over the circle is holomorphic on x minus the divisor. And so we'll have a holonomy, holonomy morphism uh, written by Kapustin and Cherkis from the module space of monopoles to this module space of multiplicative Higgs bundles. So uh, then uh, we can define that the space of the polystable multiplicative Higgs bundles would be the image of uh, the holonomy map in the module space of multiplicative Higgs bundles. And there would be a version of Donaldson, Ullenberg, Yao, or Kobayashi, Hitchin, or others correspondence, which uh, provide algebraic description of the stability condition on the module space of Higgs bundles. And the idea of this correspondence is to build the reverse map, uh, the reverse map to the one which sends uh, monopoles to Higgs. So this reverse map uh, would uh, find uh, S1 prime invariant harmonic Hermitian matrix on the extended four-dimensional space X times one times S1 prime, where the auxiliary circle is used to convert Bogomolin equations to self-dual Young-Mills equations invariant around the circle. And uh, the harmonian Hermitian matrix will equip uh, in the end the solutions uh, to the structure of instantons, so solutions of the self-dual young mills equations. So after the work of Donaldson and uh, consequent works, uh, a convenient way to build such harmonic uh, matrix by running a gradient descent on the young mills uh, functional. And uh, it's quite straightforward to uh, show uh, Well, you, it, it, it's referred to show that the, the functional, uh, excuse me. So non-trivial part of uh, this analysis is to show that uh, uh, when, the, when this flow continues, it actually reaches the harmonic metric in the limit of the infinite time. And for the compact complex surfaces, the proof was given by Donaldson. And in Simpson, the heat flow was extended to non-compact surfaces with a certain assumption, namely, Particularly, that assumption was an uh, assumption of finite volume, which doesn't apply to the present uh, situation. Uh, then, further, 
using, using essentially Simpson method, uh, Charbonne and Hortobis in 2008, they extended the proof to the case of monopoles still on a compact uh, space, total space uh, X, where X is compactified to a finite volume, but they allowed singularities. So they could handle the analysis uh, which required in the proof of this uh, flow to harmonic matrix near uh, singularities. And then again, 10 years later, uh, Mochizuki in 2017, so it's just two years ago, uh, finally relaxed the finite assumption of Simpson and uh, consequently uh, from uh, his analysis, uh, there is a proof that Danasen Olibek Yao Kobayashi Hitchin correspondence uh, exists from multiplicative polystable uh, bundle on P1 to singular monopoles on R2 times S1. So this is uh, this line of works added more necessary analysis to the original ideas of uh, Donaldson's for the heat flow over the young Mills equations. So, so now the space of singular monopoles on uh, this uh, three-dimensional flat space R2 times S1, it comes with a natural hypercolor structure uh, uh, induced from the canonical hypercolor structure of the space of fields and the monopole equations treated as hypercolor map. So hypercolor structure can be thought as twister family, usually with, denoted with twister parameter by zeta of uh, two common zero symplectic forms. So we'll denote them two uh, omega sub zeta comma r. So, given the donaldson lundbeck uh, yao kobayashi hitchin map, we can pull back the hypercolor structure omega to the modular space of polystable bundle and then define the omega zeta, the uh, symplectic form on the modulus peaks of Higgs bundles as a pullback. So, what we want to show uh, the few steps in, in the next slides is uh, that the holomorphic symplectic structure on the modular space of Higgs bundles and used by this vertical hypercolor structure on the modular space of monopoles, sometimes called uh, like symplectic structure I in the slang of Hitchin systems, is, uh, is equal to that symplectic structure defined in the previous part of the talk by the Sklanin rational R matrix. So in this way, we'll connect uh, the mo monopoles to rational R matrix very concretely by, 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 by direct computation. So uh, let's uh, do that. So let's say that A would be the gauge field uh, of the monopole and uh, decompose it uh, in terms of uh, uh, X and X bar, where X is the complex coordinate on X. And here we extended the three-dimensional uh, case to the four-dimensional case by just adding the circle uh, uh, along which uh, the fields are invariant. So direction in this circle corresponds to the scalar field phi of the monopoles. Okay, so y is uh, s plus it plus another, another direction. So the complex part of bogan molin equations is 0, 0,2 flat curvature equation. That's the commutator of del bars vanishes. And uh, then uh, we can write the 2,0 holomorphic form uh, defined by the variations of the monopole fields uh, by this formula, uh, where that would be wedge product of the variations of uh, a and uh, a prime uh, wedged with the holomorphic uh, 2 comma 0 form dx dy on x uh, times y. This is the same as uh, writing the variations of 0 comma 1 or z bar parts of the connections because uh, 1 comma 0 parts are projected out by wedging with uh, 2 comma 0 form. Right? So this is canonical formula for the symplectic structure then the modular space of monopoles and our goal is to show that it coincides with uh, the formula we written down before for the symplectic structure on the modular space of Higgs bundles, which also shown before coincides with this Kleinian formula. Okay, so let's uh, do this computation concretely, uh, uh, quickly. So, so we, we have that the connections are self-dual, so that means uh, F0, uh, 2 form F0, 2 is 0. Then uh, for a local variation, uh, we, 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 we can have a potentials in, so that the local variation delta of the connection is del bar of B. So B are local potentials. We cannot, of course, do it globally. So we have to do it in patches around uh, like uh, each uh, chart I. And so there would be a corresponding uh, BI local potential. But uh, by local gauge transformation, we can ensure that uh, if we 
pick a, a slice, horizontal slice, s equals zero, we can trivialize there. So when restricted to those uh, slices at s equals zero, you have just uh, the canonical uh, del bar variation. Now, since uh, these BIs, these potentials generate uh, local gauge transformations, we can uh, compute the variation of the group Higgs fields, which was the monogamy, which was the monogamy of uh, A bar dy bar over the vertical circle. And uh, those left and uh, right uh, vector fields are values of these potentials at 0 or 2 pi r when we uh, present uh, uh, um, S1 as interval of from 0 to 2 pi r glued at uh, between 0 and 2 to pi r. So now let's integrate uh, this formula where the variations of the gauge connections are replaced by a del bar of two potentials. And uh, for that, uh, it will be necessary to integrate twice by parts or apply twice the Stokes formula to connect that to a formula which involves just uh, B without del bars. And uh, one can do it uh, carefully by uh, decomposition of, uh, uh, by, 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 by cutting the three-dimensional uh, space into the cylinders, the, the vertical uh, cylinders uh, built on top of uh, each uh, patch UI. And then first uh, you integrate uh, to the boundary of uh, the cylinder. So then uh, the formula will involve uh, uh, B without del bar and another B with del bar. And then uh, using agreement on the boundary between the variations, since this is variation of the gauge field, one can move with the computation further. I'm moving maybe fast, but just to give the logic flow. And uh, then one can integrate another one by Stokes theorem, reducing to the boundary and uh, get uh, in, the, uh, in the final result that the omega uh, form the symplectic form the module space of monopoles evaluated on the variations represented by the del bar of those potentials in terms exactly exactly in the form that we had for the module space of uh, Higgs bundles where uh, xi is the value of b at zero or at the two pi r. So so this concludes uh, that uh, uh, concludes illustration of uh, of the proof that uh, there is a symplectomorphism between the module space of uh, monopoles in the vertical hypercolor structure and the module space of Higgins bundles. So there have been uh, very connected works, of course. I mentioned the, the, the key is by Gerasimov, Kharchov, Lebedev, and Ablazin about uh, Yangian and quantized singular monopoles on R3 and by Kamitzer, Webster, Wicks, and Jacobi on Yangian slices and affine Grassmannian, and by Braverman, Finkelberg, Nakajima on Coulomb branches and slices and affine Grassmannian. So let me have, a, well, I should finish soon. Uh, let me say in a few words, um, epsilon twist of the story. So for epsilon twist, uh, you take the following, you, you, you deform the module space of monopoles by uh, considering them not on a uh, straight like rectangular product between x and s1, but on a twisted product of epsilon, so that x is moved uh, by epsilon when you move it around the circle. And uh, then the resulting module space is still hypercolor metric and used from the flat Euclidean structure, and we want to connect it to, uh, you know, algebraic description like uh, in the previous uh, slides. So the appropriate uh, version of the module space of Higgs bundles becomes the module space of epsilon difference connections, namely the Higgs, uh, the usual uh, group valued uh, uh, Higgs field, which uh, could be uh, treated uh, in, excuse me, uh, could, be, could, uh, could be treated as a Epsilon difference connection. So this is a this is difference version, and the, the picture becomes like a difference version of the usual uh, case of the Hitchin system, where the module space of flat connections on X uh, viewed in the complex structure J. So this is a complex structure J version of uh, that case. Uh, there is a uh, there is a version for 
uh, the Steinberg section, which is uh, we, we, which will be here like uh, an analog of Hitchin section or constant section for the uh, case of uh, Hitchin systems, and uh, and uh, from uh, that section one can construct construct uh, the sub variety or of uh, epsilon difference uh, operas. So this, uh, well, I'm skipping because need to finish, but just to give keywords. So this brain of operas, uh, it comes as a mirror of the canonical uh, coisotropic brain quantizing the module space of Higgs bundles uh, in uh, the case, in the, in the usual case of uh, uh, Higgs bundles. But in the case of the group valued Higgs bundles, we, we see that there is similar uh, statement holds. And so uh, when you do quasi degradation of this epsilon difference operas, you get B turns out like equations for the spectrum of quantized integrable system on the module space of multiplicity for group value three Higgs bundles. And uh, the connected works goes to Frankel, Rishitichin, and uh, Sevastyanov, and uh, then um, later developments with uh, uh, Samson and uh, uh, Nikita uh, connecting to the gauge theory, to the supersymmetric gauge theory in four dimensions in omega backgrounds. Uh, and furthermore, the second quantization, or like if you do first the deformation of this operas and then quantize it, then you get the difference W algebra, or whose currents are also known as quantized QQ uh, characters. So in these notations, in the current notations, epsilon, comma, h bar uh, characters. Uh, okay, maybe a few concluding remarks is that, uh, which I didn't explain, but uh, people no, that the module space of this multiplicative G Higgs bundles, if G is of AD type, is identified with Coulomb branches of n equals to AD equivalent gauge theories. But what was shown before, uh, sorry, my talk was about general case, not necessarily um, <coughs> AD. Then uh, SYZ duality on the fibers of integrable system of this multiplicative Higgs bundles, it provides a geometric view on the Q geometric length lens. Uh, described by Frankel Rishitichin and Aganonik Frankel Okonkov. Uh, well, we sort of explained that quantization of M Higgs in the vertical complex structure provides Yangian's modules and various versions of speed chase and bit ansatz. Uh, H quantization of Steinberg section leads to W algebras and then it relates to the vertex algebras at the corner and uh, also Koha of Konsevich and Sobelman. And maybe one more point is that. Uh, you, you can do the quantization of this modulus Higgs, uh, of multiplicative Higgs, by the pa path integral of the form like PDQ, the D inverse of the symplectic form. And that uh, leads to semi holomorphic chern Simon theory on X times S1 times R, uh, the, 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 the first section of which I can, I can see in uh, Nekrasov's 96 uh, PhD thesis. And uh, then uh, <coughs> the theory was uh, uh, developed independently by uh, uh, Costello and uh, further concrete computations done in Costello, Witt, and Yamazaki. And uh, this is very parallel to the relation between quantization of the flat connections on X and the usual chain assignments on X times R, R1, like in, in the Witten work, but uh, making it, uh, making uh, uh, like a holomorphic version of uh, the, the real coordinate. Okay, so that's, I conclude here and uh, happy birthday, Samson. Thank you. Uh, thanks a lot. Are there any questions or comments? So, is it uh, the Bolomoli equation, the modulus space of solution, is it SU2 modulus space or U1 modulus space you are considering? Uh, compact, compactly group, G. Any compactly group. Okay. So, but there is a reason by Donaldson that says that the modulus space of solution to this Bolomoli equation for SUT, actually, uh, the and also this. Uh, Rational function, which which is fixed at infinity or zero at infinity, uh, is fibered by the circle over this modulus space of solution of this uh, Bogomol equation. So, this. I, I, are you referring to R three? Are you referring to R three? When uh, sorry, equations on R three or on which space? Okay, so here we consider an R two times S one, a different setup. Okay. So one time. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. About the last bullet point in the last slide. Yes. Is there an uh, elliptic analog? Castella? Yeah, is there an elliptic analog with uh, Bungie? 
either elliptic analog uh, is Bungier. Ah, you mean, well, yes, I mean, it, it should be, I think it should be holomorphic chair assignments uh, in three-dimensional complex space. Like, like here, this uh, uh, chair assignments Well, the short answer is yes, but I'm not sure if it's uh, written down somewhere. But uh, uh, to me, it seems there is a straightforward way to replace uh, that circle, which is here by elliptic group. And uh, instead of uh, studying this uh, semi-holomorphic chair assignments, just consider the Chairman science theory on uh, complex three-dimensional variety. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry if I missed. It, it was mentioned in your talk, but still. Uh, uh, do you have some analog of the spectral <coughs> description of this phase space, like with the spectral curve and the line bundle on it? Something analogous to this? Yes, so the spectral description is uh, the chimeral uh, curve. We have concrete formulas in paper with uh, Nikita from 2012. What is the uh, final formulation? <coughs> There we have each point of the synthetic manifold Hitchens one. Right. Response can be described as a curve. Yes. In some surface, right? Yes. And the line bundle on it. Right. And here. Right. So so here it would be uh, slightly more involved. Maybe I will write a couple more formulas. So let's say that uh, you have x is our base curve, right? So in the Hitchens case, you would take a t star to x. Okay, here we don't take t star to x, we take, well, we assumed already that x is flat, and we'll take x uh, times tg, the maximal uh, torus of g. Okay, actually... Um, but for gel, it should be, this could, in huh? case of group gel, one can go to surfaces, but yeah. Yes, yes, one can, one, one can go, right, right. Um, so, excuse me, uh, so let me... Shall I say it? Uh, so, let, so let me just write it concretely. Like I'll take here uh, rank G and uh, um, Uh, right, and uh, so the, the, the equations uh, here which uh, define the, the curve here are given by uh, writing a collection of the characters where I runs over fundamental representation of G. G of X is the group valued Higgs field, and you equate them to some fixed uh, f functions, let's say Ti of X. Well, polynomials or rational functions with a fixed singularity at the divisor. So instead, uh, for a general group, instead of uh, writing the spectral curve, one writes this chimeral curve in uh, the high dimensional space. You can replace it by the spectral curve uh, in easy way. If the group is GL, then one can also write determinant, which would combine all information about uh, these characters. But uh, this is more, more, more general construction. So you, you take this curve, so it's a chimeral curve in, uh, in one plus rank G dimensional space. And uh, over that chimeral curve, again, there is a, a line bundle uh, defined by this abstract uh, construction of Donagi Gaizgori. Hitchin system, uh, it was important that the surface uh, where the uh, spectral curve leaves yes. Yes. Uh, it's two dimensional, yes. and therefore is uh, Poisson. Okay. And here it's. Uh, I, I cannot understand how uh, the symplectic structure of the, the spectral data can arise from uh, this picture alone, because there it was just general, part of the general construction, uh, symplectic structure of the modular space of uh, Schrift's on a. Poisson surface. Okay, but, but, but here, I mean, it, it wasn't necessary for argue, uh, our argument. We constructed the symplectic form on the module space of multiplicative Higgs bundles independent of the chimeral curve construction. We constructed it directly from the definition. And namely, we constructed it by showing that the module space of multiplicative Higgs bundles is in fact a symplectic leaf 
in the Poisson Lee group with this Kleinian structure. So, so, so we, we, we came from that end without referring to like the construction that you see. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay. Well, the conference ends, but mass and physics continue. So let, let's <laughs> speak again. <laughs>